So, the audience, we are back live on air. Thank you for tuning in and staying with us. Our next speaker is already coming up. Shevin, who do we have? Yeah, let us now welcome uh, Zulaika, who is the director and co-founder of Spoon Consulting. And she's going yeah. to talk about the impact of disruptive technologies on millennials. Okay, welcome Suleika. Thank you for joining in. Yep, I am in. Yep, the okay. floor is yours. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, we are here. I mean, I'm here on the line. Happy to be here. And thanks to the Developers Conference team doing a great job. When I chose, in fact, when I chose the subject, I would have never, ever thought how disruption would hit us so hard in such a short period of time. Temperature testing, lockdown, travel bans, working from home, I mean, all and so on, all these things which would, we would have thought impossible have become possible. And today, this virtual conference is a tangible is a proof of disruption. Not only it shows the agility and the innovative mindset to come up with a brilliant solution and hosting whatever happens, the conference as a virtual one. So we are together. I'm going to deliver my talk. Afterwards, you're going to ask your questions. We're going to share some time together. I know, I know that the human touch will be missing, okay? I mean, this is, nothing can replace this. There will be no networking, uh, no cocktails, no happy hour, but at least... Mm. <laughs> Not but this time. We, we, we keep it, we keep it. I mean, it's definitely in the books that we keep it for the upcoming physical conference next year. Uh, so we have to party harder next year. <laughs> okay. okay, but at least the conference is on and that's been brilliant and uh, now let's dive into the subject so why why millennials millennials also called the generation y born in the 80s and 90s by the year 2025 they will be making up more than 75 percent of the workforce and this demographic shift will have really have a huge impact on our society, knowing that our society is ruled also by innovation and disruption. So this is really a broad topic. On my side, I will focus on three points. The first one, how this generation Y, the millennials, are going to navigate in this new world geared by innovation and disruption. The second one, how companies, corporates, are going to operate to keep their business going on because they are not going to have to cope with the millennials, which will be a major component of their workforce, but also with innovation and disruption. And last but not least, the academic institutions, because this is where the future leaders of tomorrow are going to be shaped up. So how these academic institutions are going to act as incubators for innovation. And then, of course, I couldn't deliver my talk today without involving, without including this unprecedented sanitary crisis we are facing. So the COVID-19. But again, I'm going to focus on the positive impacts of COVID-19. So, innovation and disruption. So we know today that there are so many innovative technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, Internet of Things, uh, augmented reality, drone technology, chatbots, robotics, and much more, just to name some of them. And as a result of these innovative technologies, we all know that there will be 
a huge amount of low skilled jobs which will disappear. And of course, there will be creation of future jobs. And I'm sure that even there are jobs which we not even know which are going to be created in the future. So I just, just for a midterm, future jobs, like interesting software developers and programmers. I'm sure there are quite a number of you in the audience here. And also lots of jobs related to robotics and all these e-jobs, like today everybody, everything is becoming e, and things related to healthcare, because this is becoming also very important, uh, drone videographers, but here I will pinpoint the sustainability manager because when I was working, I mean, I didn't know about this job post. And today this has become a must. Companies, it is a must for them to have a sustainability manager because we all know that today what we have to sustain, for example, our environment. So this is becoming a job. It's a, it's a new job, but it is here. So that's why you millennials, you will have to really pivot, evolve, learn and grow, shape your future, knowing that you should shift your mindset to focus mainly on the opportunities rather than the threats. We know that there is, we acknowledge this, there is an exponential rise in the automation, but we have to really embrace technology and get ready to be an integral part of the fourth revolution. And then how do we do that? Let's see. Okay, there is a question. I think it's one of the most dreaded questions. How many of you have been asking like, who am I? We, we don't like to ask this question. But nobody else, no one else will know you better than you. And self-discovery is the new, unique way to identify your core values, your strengths, your non-negotiable core values, your flexible values, your weaknesses, your skill sets, your dream job, your sustainable career job, what wakes you up, where are the vibrations, and I think most importantly two things, your purpose and your comfort zone. Because if you don't know where is your comfort zone, you won't be able to disrupt your comfort zone. And if you don't disrupt, if you don't step out of your comfort zone, but you won't move on. So this is very important to know where it is to be able to do that. It's like some days ago, I just come across a video about uh, Saqib Sheikh, who is someone who lost his eyes like he was when he was quite young. And today he has used his empathy, his passion and AI to turn disability into and engine for innovation. He has built a mobile app, an app, which really can help him today to know what is happening around him, to even see like the description of the people with whom he is chatting, what they are doing, whether they are sleeping or they are really listening to him. And even they can also uh, he, he can also use this to read the menu when he's to, going to the restaurant. So this is something really, I was, it was amazing to see how this person, he has been using, okay, technology, but now today really for a better life, not for himself, but for all these disabled people. I think that you millennials, you have a tremendous opportunity, not only to dream about your future, but also you can build your future. So now let's see how the corporates are going to deal with the millennials. Knowing that this SWOT analysis, it has been done um, with my own experience 
because I have been managing uh, millennials for quite a number of years um, within Spoon Consulting, getting to know them, being like using my empathy, trying to be like them, to catch up. And that's why I think I try to really get to know them. So I think they are strong, they are ambitious, they are passionate, they are achievement oriented, they need challenges. At the same time, they have got weaknesses also because they are young people and they will be looking for mentorship, guidance. And also one thing also I have learned during my years with them, something which I didn't know, it's the culture of voice. They need to be valorized, they need to be recognized, they need the others to voice out their feelings about them. They need to, to feel this bonding. And again, we know that there are threats also because they are living in a, in a world which is moving so fast, which is changing every day, where change is the only constant. So this has an impact on how they are. Like they can be job hoppers, but at the same time, they also focus on experiences. I think for them, being having a job is also having an experience. It's okay, money is important, but experience is far more important. So this is really something that millennials, they are different from us, because even if I consider them, I'm also a little bit millennial. And again, I think the corporates, they should really take these as an opportunity that they are having a workforce majorly composed of tech savvy, of people who are so comfortable with technology, so motivated. They can do so many things, so many innovative things. They no longer have this, you know, this non-traditional mindset. They are smart people. And here I'm going to quote Steve Jobs, like hire smart people, not only to tell them what to do, but for them to tell us what to do. I deeply think that corporates who have understood this and decided to adopt a different way of leading, a different leadership style based on self-responsibility and trust have already a step made a step forward to success and success not only for the company but also for their talents for their people and now let's come to the academic institutions which is really crucial because this is where the leaders of tomorrow are going to be shaped and what we can notice also today is we have an education based on academic excellence, which is great. But there is, there should really be when we see how these people, again, I can recall when I, I was hiring um, the young millennials from the university, they came out like great techs, they were toppers, they had great technical knowledge, but still was missing, you know, these skills where they, they don't really have clues about what a corporate, what a company is, uh, what is the attitude they have to adopt, um, what is the company expecting from them, how they communicate with the company, how the, the, the same, how the, the company, what the company is expecting from them. So I think this is really crucial that rethinking the education process to be able to have a mixture of academic, theory, theoretical education, and also experience, experiential learning on the job training. Because we can see today, even on the people working today, they, they normally they, they are uh, used to, like they will have to, to do new technologies. And whenever they do that, they also have to do certifications. And it's a real plus to have a new technology base and 
cert certified with this new technology. So we see that even on the job, this is neither these two things, like the ferry part and the on the job part. Again, so another thing is communication. I think during this lockdown, there has been a massive use of digital communication tools. People have been communicating more than ever using technology. And we, we have seen like a strong relationship and a strong bonding amongst the teachers, the students, and most importantly, their parents. Because I think these two actors, teachers and parents, play an important role in the choice of their career for the student. And this should be something maybe established not only during lockdown, but should be something like new normal, that all these different people talk to each other, speak to each other. Let's say, for example, a teacher has identified like an entrepreneurial mindset for one of his students. And one of his students is a girl, so it complicates things. But the teacher can talk to the parent. But the parents will surely say, oh, you're crazy, what's that? She has to go and learn and be an accountant and be whatever. But that lady, that young girl, young lady, she's got ideas and she really wants to execute them. But she needs like the guidance for this. And I think the communication and the career guidance supporting at an early stage can really foster a new generation of entrepreneurs, of startups, because they are here. I mean, we know that there are entrepreneurs, but because they are fearless, they want to like go into the, the business world on their own. There are incubators at a later stage, I would say. But if there could be something at an earlier stage, this would really be of a great, great help to these people having wanting to be their own boss. Last but not least, digitalization, digital information. When I was a student, I had to bring, to carry huge books or run to the libraries, but I didn't have, I mean, that opportunity. Do you know how lucky you are to be able to have everything, almost every information at your fingertips, wherever, whenever? So please never ever restrict your knowledge scope to what you are learning in the universities or at schools because go and never stop learning. I think never stop learning is really key to growth. Taking my example, today I'm learning um, Spanish. So I bought an app um, learning like digital learning. And since one and a half months, I'm having a teacher on Zoom. And that's great, that's perfect. And we can see that, again, it's like, you know, turning the challenges into opportunities. I cannot travel to a Spanish country to learn, but then what did I do? I looked for this information. Where can I find a place to learn? And it is on Zoom. And I think something also like it's important to know that we never ever stop learning. And okay, so I just said that turning challenges into opportunities. I know, I know that it's not easy to keep um, a positive, optimistic mind during times of crisis. It can be challenging, but when we see what has come out, because if, um, okay, Mauritius actually is easier than abroad, but even when we see what is coming out of this in Mauritius and on an international level, we can acknowledge one thing, it's people, everybody is being constructive. Because let's take the example of all these people who have been working from home. 
working from home, they have been working from home, and they have been delivering, and they have been juggling with everything, all the different uh, aspects of life, not only working, but they have made it. And again, when we see what they have been doing during these, like, um, lockdown period and having to work from another, it's again going, getting out of their comfort zone because they were no longer in the office working normally. They were out of their comfort zone, but they have made it. And also, the the thing is, they I'm sure that lots of people, even me, what we have been doing is uh, making a self development plan because we have been able to think, to uh, develop ourselves, like um, our self-responsibility, our time management, our commitment and trust, because we have seen that there has been really established a trust between everybody because they were not sitting behind us. I mean, the managers were somewhere. Okay, there have been lots of tools which have been implemented but this has helped so i think another thing also we have to notice is that technology is the less impacted sector we know that there are many sectors which are really very much impacted but we are in a privileged sector but even in the other what we can see also is people are doing things differently i think this is the now in our new normal and to really build a better future and to evolve, to grow, to find innovative solutions is to do things differently for a better world. Um, so again here I will recall the Mauritius Research Council, the MRIC, which uh, made a call for proposal during the COVID-19. And the call for proposal was for the fast track innovative projects to counter the impacts of COVID-19. So there have been like um, more than 250 responses and 26 of them have been rewarded and they have been awarded grants to pursue their projects, innovative projects. For example, I can name the University of Mauritius, which got uh, quite a, a nice grant for their project, which was to uh, make reusable nanofibers of masks from the nanofiber cellulose mask. I think that's great to see how um, everybody is struggling, everybody is thriving, everybody is trying to find something better, something for a better world. And I'm going also to just to to tell a little thing is I have um, I saw one of my uh, one of my people people in my network an entrepreneur who did uh, a little video and what he said I was amazed by this that in Mauritius we no longer have COVID for Mauritians who are listening to me will understand the COVID thing like uh, not brainy. But we have, we really have brainy people here in Mauritius. So we have Coco Plan. So let's now take advantage of being Coco Plan and do things differently based on technology, innovation, and even disruption. So let's disrupt before getting disrupted. Here I put some icons because I found this quite relevant because, for example, Netflix, everybody, almost everybody has Netflix, but Netflix does not own any cinema at all. Skype, we are all on Skype right now, but Skype doesn't own any telco infrastructure. Facebook, no content at all, but it's the world's largest media company. Uber, no cars at all world's largest taxi company, Airbnb same, no property at all, and Alibaba, no inventory at all. So what we can take out of this 
that things are really, really being done differently. So get out of your comfort zone, reimagine yourself, reinvent yourself, recreate yourself, and try to be like game changers, change makers, thought leaders, because one thing for sure, we will have to learn how to live in this world with human beings, with artificial intelligence, and with robots. So let's get ready. Thank you so much. Ending on this positive note for listening and uh, wishing you all the best. And now the floor is yours for your question. Yes, so like, uh, thank, uh, thank you so much for this presentation. And I have to say that um, I fully agree um, with your, um, with one of your key aspects in regards to um, a female presence in, in the STEM field, that this is um, quite, um, let's say, uh, underrepresented. Because, I mean, seeing um, recent information also being, uh, you know, um, um, being topics in, in, in Hollywood, in movies, that actually um, scientific achievements in the past um, were thanks to uh, women. I mean, if we, if we look, for example, of, about the... Um, uh, activities that uh, the the ladies were doing in um, uh, at NASA in regards to the, the the preparations for the Apollo space program, the moon landing, it's just impressive about what was going on there and and what has been achieved by those ladies. Um, another um, significant um, person in in that field. Is surely Grace Hopper. There's also the um, uh, Grace Hopper, um, um, what is it, uh, institute or um, um, institute that actually gives out scholarships to to um, uh, female students every year uh, for for to support uh, uh, them in their in their learning in their in their progress, is particularly in the in the field of STEM. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm was, I was really happy about that you mentioned it to going forward that it's, you know, um, it's not just about what what um, the social, the, the sociological aspects, the constraints are in society, but that ladies, women should actually pick up what they like, what they get inspired by, and that they go for their passion. I mean, early on, we had Gagana. She clearly said, okay, she got inspired by a little BB-8 robot to go and explore more deeper into technology, how she can use that um, to create something new. And I think this is the spirit. And to my opinion, it is not limited to gender. And it would be a shame or a, a huge waste if we uh, would run uh, the world, humanity, just on 50% capability. <clears throat> yep, I fully agree. And uh, um, when we do, even when we see like the different countries managed by women today have been the best ones coming out of this pandemic. So I mean, it's it's it makes us laugh at the same time, but it's a fact. So so I think there are other um, characteristics of women which are needed in the technology field because it's uh, it's something com completing like each other like men have their characteristics great but they need the woman also to be able to do something like you said to for a better future that's for sure but i think things are changing it's not yeah. changing as fast as it should but at yes. least even in mauritius it's changing a lot yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's also that we see um, a, a very good um, level, even that it 
definitely could be way better of um, participation of female speakers in, in the past and, and the current developers conference. I mean, it, it is increasing. Um, I love this trend, but I have also to confirm that it could be stronger that uh, and we are always looking into possibilities about how we we can um, get the contact to to women in their in in the stem field in the it field to you know to encourage them to to be present or to talk during one of our monthly meetings um, like we did in the past or even then like at such major international events like the annual developers conference so it would be great to have your input to to have your support in this area that we can uh, work together to to increase um, the level of female participation in regards to speakers to talks but also in the audience um, for our community yep agree yeah no, i think the community really appreciated your talk today i'm seeing some very positive comments and some claps in the chat yeah thank you very much for this talk i really like when uh, at the beginning you talk about self-reflection i think that's a very very powerful tip to the young generation out there like you need to always reflect on what you are and what you want to do and also how you want to change and i don't think uh, it's part of the culture here yet but it's definitely something that we need to encourage people to do more um, yeah, quick question for you. Your presentation, like you emphasize a lot about the millennials. How do you see the impact and the weakness of millennials in the enterprise world from a leader perspective? Uh, so what I said is, the, the, let's talk about the positive part. Um, because what you, your question is about the weaknesses how more the weaknesses or both yeah let's let's talk about both of them okay no because i think they are strong that's what i said because they are ambitious and passionate because they love what they do and the other part is it's not really a weakness but i think it's it's different from what we we were used to because they need to feel that they are um, you know, almost like in a family because they, they need this bonding because you see that millennials today, you, you can see it like friends, friendship. Uh, there are mm -hmm. much, because my parents, for example, didn't really have friends, but I can see myself, you know, I'm not a millennial, but my daughter and my friends, how I think this is really very important. And, and again, I reiterate this is about the experience part and also millennials they need to learn i think that's important help them to go on learning that they are not feeling that they it's stagnant and new things new technologies and investing in them i think that's also very important that they feel there is an investment and also they feel that you can ask them things I think you can. You are not only like ma making rules, and I would say taking them as your partners, as your partners in business, not having them like uh, your employees, but your partners. That should be that's that should be something really for me something um, helping to to make them come out of their again of their comfort zone because sometimes they are used to like their little comfort zone very some kind of afraid to come out of it but if they feel that there is this partnership uh having this relationship and what i said before also having a different leadership style a different leadership style based on self-responsibility and trust because these people they, they are now i think there is this we have seen it that millennials are self-responsible Mm -hmm. yep. yeah and i think Great. generally like people feel more motivated when they are part of the decision process and they are participating towards um like achieving the goal together with the leaders instead of 
like it just a top down communication strategy. Mm, of course. I think this yeah, yeah, generally, yeah. 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 Generally Based on this it, partnership, yeah. like they have the same goals, all of them, yes. for sure. I mean, we see it. We see it as well with the with the um, participation from from uh, um, community members, because again, um, all our our websites are online. We have um, um, a very open um, interaction. Um, even for our company, uh, it's a situation that uh, we run it like an, you know, uh, an open door business. So if somebody from the community wants to come and pop in uh, at our place, they are most welcome. And usually it's then having a, a nice dialogue, a chit chat about career development, about um, maybe some project assignments that they are stuck. But even now in the preparations of the conference, we had huge involvement um, of, of younger community members and, and it was great to you know share uh, first of all the the common goal where we are heading to so that they get the understanding what is the direction and on the other side the situation about um, you know giving them asking them for for what tasks they would like to to go for to actually uh, nourish and 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 uh, tickle their their passion out of them but on the other side also um being uh on their heels in regards that you know the commitment is there and uh, even though that it's fun that um you know we need to we need to see to achieve the goal together and this is really happening which is very good. Um, yep. The other thing, uh, Suleika, that you mentioned that also I'm, I'm a really big fan about is um, you never, you should never stop learning. And uh, my questions towards you in this case is um, when did you actually realize this, this, this credo, this, this mantra? In, in your experience, in your life? I would say at a very, very early stage. Okay. Because, yeah, because I've always been very, I would say that greedy, curious, and, you know, always wanting more. And it's also, I would say, Whenever you learn and you are capable of achieving something, you want more. And you think that, okay, I've been able to do that because I thought it was not possible, but I made it. So now I can do something else. And this, like this learning, or everything is based on learning. But at the same time, it's like a motivator, you know. It's such like a cheerleader, yes. like, you know, yes. like... Okay, I made it, so now I can do something different, and I'm sure that I'll be able to do it. Sometimes, yeah, it's, it's really like, I think it's been like this since a very long time. And also, another thing is, um, you know, like living several lives in one life, because we all have only one life, but uh, at least uh, learning different things and doing different things, it's like you are living different lives, and that's also something great. Yeah, definitely. And if I may add a follow-up question to both of you, and how do you plan your day to always find the time to keep learning? How do you plan your day to always find the time? But I, I, I know that I've said that, that I would ha love to have, like, even 72 hours in a day would not be enough, you know? But... Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I, I, I talk about that, the time management, and I think it's also a question of priority, what you prioritize, um, because we have time, we have a time which is like a limited thing, we have 24 hours a day and, you know, but at least we should, I always do that, I write everything on the, like a to-do list, sometimes it's true mm. when I come uh, the afternoon I've done nothing, but at least... I know that this is my priority for the day. Because I think 20 minutes out of a, day, of a day is nothing. But if you take these 20 minutes to do something productive and constructive, that's perfect. So, yep. 
that's the way I, I, I do it. I don't know, Johan, how you do it, but but you, yeah, you it, have it, other concerns than me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's as you as you say, it is really about that. Um, you take your calendar, and um, it's it's kind of like you 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 book an appointment with yourself. Um, I think this might be the best and easiest approach that you say, okay, um, like you would plan and reserve time to to go to the gym um, or to to go to an uh, evening get together um, is a situation that you could say, okay, um, like in the morning, uh, you you reserve like ten minutes, fifteen minutes um, for some learning unit. Um, and actually, a lot of people here in Mauritius are on their daily commute, which is about between 20 minutes to 60 minutes on the bus. There is the possibility that you can actually use this time uh, instead of going through your social media, that you can actually use it to learn a language, that you can read uh, a book. I mean, there are um, the possibilities about that. And even in the evening, you know, a lot of people might say, oh, yeah, I don't know. I watch TV. I watch this series. I watch that episode, that episode, that episode. Suddenly, three hours are gone. But on the other side is the, is the statement, oh, I have no time in the evening to sit down and, you know, study something or learn something. Um, it's the way how you really uh, motivate yourself and how you practice a little bit of self-discipline that you say, okay, um, how can how can it be done? And I think, you know, even if you start with like five minutes, it's better than zero. And it comes then with um, um, a practice. Yeah, and one thing that I've yeah. been experimenting is to use Audible during the commute time. This works for learning like non-tech stuff, like anything that you want to learn. You download the, the Audible uh, audiobook and you can listen while commuting. So it works very well, but also it depends on the voice of the person. Sometimes it might be boring. Um, regarding technology, what I usually do, I like to book like long and extended amount of time that's usually early saturdays or late sundays like five or six hours where i can focus on learning something and i find that's this sort of working for me yeah that's a lot okay um so Leica, thank you so much yeah. for your time um, also, big shout out to Spoon Consulting to be an ongoing partner for the MSSC and the Developers Conference. Um, and with that, um, looking forward to the next uh, opportunities and hopefully um, next year then for the physical conference, perhaps earlier with other activities to exchange the network. And uh, with this, Thank you so much for your time and the presentation. I think it was quite inspirational for our female audience. And um, yeah, hoping that there will be kind of, uh, quite some follow up for you, um, maybe perhaps on LinkedIn, something like that, so that other uh, women might even reach out to you. Okay, All right. thank you so much. Thank it's you. Me. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. bye.